Okay, geometry students, in this video today we will be studying conditional statements. Uh, those, those are also called, if you remember correctly, if-then statements. And so we're going to be studying these some more and looking at some new terms and also learning two laws of logic. Okay, so <clears throat> with that in mind, let's go ahead and copy down our heading for today. Our heading for today is contrapositives and laws of logic. Please copy that in your notes, contrapositives and and laws of logic lesson 3.3 and be sure and include today's date okay contrapositives and laws of logic lesson 3.3 and be sure and include today's date all right let's continue on let's start off by learning how to write a contrapositive statement okay so let's start off by learning how to do this here's a definition that you are responsible for on your tests and quizzes and so please copy this in your notes here it is a contrapositive statement <clears throat> it is a statement that is formed by writing the converse now let's stop right there you guys should remember how to write the converse of a conditional statement if you don't I'm going to review that again today for a couple minutes, but you should remember that. A contrapositive statement is a statement that is formed by writing the converse of a conditional statement. And then notice you do one other thing. You negate both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Now students, I know you might not know what that means. But I will explain that to you later, okay? So go ahead and copy this definition in your notes. I'll give you just a second to do that. I'm going to read it one more time. A contrapositive statement is a statement that is formed by writing the converse of a given conditional statement and then negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion. Okay, now the best way to explain this, of course, is to give you an example, okay? so. Let me give you an example, and that should help a lot. All right, so here is how you write a contrapositive statement. <clears throat> Go ahead and copy this conditional statement in your notes, if you would, please. If the weather is good, then I will go swimming. Okay, copy that in your notes, please. If the weather is good, then I will go swimming. Okay, now, I want us to write the contrapositive. Well, now, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to write the converse, okay? That's what, the, that's what the definition says up here. The contrapositive statement is a statement that's formed by writing the converse and then negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion, okay? So, if we're going to write the contrapositive statement of this conditional statement, the first thing we do is we write the uh, converse. So, I would write, first of all, now, now, students, don't write this down, please. Just listen to me. Don't write anything down. Um, just listen to me. If I, if I wrote the converse, it would say, <clears throat> if I go swimming, then the weather is good. Does everybody understand that? If I wrote the converse of the statement, I would take the conclusion, and I would write it here, and I would take the hypothesis and I would write it over here. That's what the converse is, okay? But then we take it a step further, we negate both sides. So I would say, instead of saying, if I go swimming, I would say, if I don't go swimming, that's called negating it, then the weather is not good. That is how you write a contrapositive statement. So let's, t let's take a look at this typed, okay? Here it is. Now copy this down. Here's the contrapositive statement. Notice I wrote my conclusion first and I put the word not. I negated it. Then I wrote this next at the end and I negated it by putting the word not. Oh, Mr. Earhart, this is a waste of time. This is dumb. Not at all. I'm going to show you in your homework and also toward the end of the class today how we're going to use this. Okay, it's really important to do actually. But here's what you do. Now, now the statement would read like this. If, if I do not go swimming, then the weather is not good. 
and that's the contrapositive. I'm probably being a little boring, but once again, I swap the hypothesis and the conclusion, and I negate each one, okay? Let's try another one. Okay, copy this in your notes, and if you want to work ahead and write your own contrapositive, that's fine, okay? Or you can work with me, whatever you want to do. Okay, I did not mean to do that, but I guess they're both going to pop up, so that's fine. Let's see what's next here. Yeah, that's what I thought, same thing. Okay, um, go ahead and copy down this uh, conditional, if you would, please. Copy this down. If we don't win the game... then I will be sad. Copy that conditional in your notes, okay? If we don't win the game, then I will be sad, all right? Now, I want you to write the contrapositive. Now, if you work ahead, that's fine, but this one's a little trickier, so make sure you pay attention. And if you work ahead, check and make sure your answer is right. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and negate the first part here, and I'm going to negate my conclusion and then I'm going to swap the two okay so here we go notice the the hypothesis already has the word not we have don't which is do not if we do not win the game now how would you negate something that already has the word not well you would cross off the word not so in order to negate this side I'm gonna put the word do if we do win the game. Now, over here, I have to negate this side. I will be sad. So I'm going to put, I will not be sad. Got it? And now, you take these two phrases and you swap places. So the first part should say, if I'm not sad, then we did win the game. So it should look like this. If I am not sad, then we won the game. Now, I hope that makes sense, students, okay? It's very important that you know how to write a contrapositive. One more time, you swap the conclusion and the hypothesis, and you negate both of them. All right, let's continue on. <clears throat> now, once and for all, let's nail down the difference between a converse statement and a contrapositive statement because if you aren't careful you will really confuse the two so please take some really good notes I want you to copy this conditional in your notes if I take good notes in geometry then I will do well in class please copy that conditional in your notes I will pause just a minute while you do that if I take good notes in geometry then I will do well in class copy that in your notes If I take good notes in geometry, then I will do well in class. Now, when you're done copying that, if you would like to work ahead, I would like you to write the converse of that statement, and then I would like you to write the contrapositive. So you can do both of those on your own, or you can watch me do it, whatever, whatever you would like to do, okay? So here's the converse, okay? Hopefully this makes sense. Here's the converse. I took this and I put it over here, and I took my if part, and I put it over here, okay? So here we go. If I do well in geometry class, then I know that I took good notes. Now, your, your converse might not read exactly like mine, but it should be similar, okay? Now, the contrapositive, we're just going to negate. Notice we... We already swapped the hypothesis and the conclusion right here, so now I'm going to negate it. If I <clears throat> do not do well in geometry class, then I know that I did not take good notes. So I added a not over here, and I added a not over here, so it should look like this. If I don't do well in geometry class then I did not take good notes that's it guys that's it okay so please make sure you understand the difference between a converse statement and a contrapositive statement 
It's very important you understand that. Now, this next note is huge. This is a huge statement, so please write this down. <clears throat> Remember in the past how we talked about this? I said to you, if I have a Prius, then I have a car. We talked about this. And then I taught you guys how the converse is not always true. If I have a car, then I have a Prius. Well, that's not necessarily true. I might have a different car than a Prius, okay? So we learned this in the past. Listen to me, students. Hope, hopefully you're writing this down. We learned this in the past. If a conditional statement is true, listen, the converse is not necessarily true. However, if a conditional statement is true, look at this, the contrapositive is always true. Always. This is so important. Please copy this sentence in your notes. Here it is. If a conditional statement is true, the converse is not necessarily true. It might be, but it might not be. However, if a conditional statement is true, then, there should be a letter in here, then, oh no, there shouldn't be, sorry about that, the, con the contrapositive is always true. And you need to know that, okay? So please copy that in your notes. I'll give you a couple more seconds to copy this down. This is a very important statement, very important. <clears throat> Okay, students, let's continue on. Now, everything that I've said so far is decently easy to understand, but let's still do a little practice, okay? Let's take one sentence and do a lot of stuff to it, just to take a second and review hypothesis, conclusion, uh, if-then statements, converses, contrapositives, all of these different things. Okay, so let's take a second and let's take one sentence and let's do a lot of different stuff to it. So here we go. Uh, please copy this sentence in your notes. Okay, just four words. Please copy this down. All birds have wings. Okay, please copy that in your notes. <clears throat> All birds have wings. Please copy that in your notes. All birds have wings. Okay, uh, you can work ahead or you can stay with me. The first thing I would like you to do is I would like you to write this statement as a conditional. So in other words, take this sentence and, and write it in if-then form. So go ahead and do that now and let's see how you do, okay? All birds have wings. So I would say if an animal is a bird, then it has wings. Now, your sentence might not be exactly like mine. You might have said, if it is a bird, then it has wings. That's fine. I just said I just said mine a little differently. I said, if an animal is a bird, then it has wings. Okay? All right. So there's your conditional. Now, next, I would like you to write the hypothesis. Okay? So looking at your conditional... Go ahead and write your hypothesis, all right? And you should remember, students, that this is your hypothesis. The if part is your hypothesis, okay? So, the, the if part of your conditional is if an animal is a bird. Now, next... I would like you to write the conclusion. So try to do that on your own. Go ahead and write the conclusion. And it should be something like this. Okay. There we go. There's your conclusion. So the if part was if an animal is a bird and the then part is then it has wings. So hope, hopefully you're doing okay. We have written a conditional. That's pretty easy. We've written a hypothesis. That's pretty easy. And we've written a conclusion. Now let's continue on. 
I would like you to write the converse of your condition. Let's go back up here and get it real quick. Uh, see if we can grab it and drag it down here. All right. So here's your condition, okay? I want you to write the converse. You can do you can do that on your own, or you can watch me now, okay? Whatever you would like to do. All right. Let's see. If an animal has wings, then it is a bird. Now, by the way, that's that's definitely not a true statement. Um, a bat has wings, but it's not a bird, okay? But nonetheless, there's the converse, okay? We took the hypothesis and the conclusion, and we swapped places. If an animal has wings, then it is a bird, okay? Now, next, I would like you to write the contrapositive, okay? So, here's your converse. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to negate this side if an animal does not have wings then it is not a bird so we've taken our converse our hypothesis and our conclusion we're already switched and now we're going to negate each side so the contrapositive should be this if an animal does not if I can type here, does not have wings, then it is not a bird. There we go. That would be the contrapositive, okay? Now, let's very quickly grab something here. Nope. Yes. All right, now look. Here is our original conditional. Here it is. If an animal is a bird, then it has wings, okay? We wrote the converse, okay, right here, and then we negated the hypothesis and we negated the conclusion, and so we have the contrapositive, okay? I hope this makes sense. You need to be really, really good at doing these, okay? It's very important that you understand how to do these. All right, moving on. Now, uh, for the rest of the class period, we're going to be looking at two laws of logic, okay? Two laws of logic. So please write these down. The first, <clears throat> the first law of logic is called the law of syllogism. Uh, this G right here sounds like a J, okay? The law of syllogism. And this arrow right here means implies. Now, you, you probably don't need to know that, but... If you want to write that down, you can. But I'd like you to write this whole uh, definition right here in your notes, if you would, please. And please make note that these really weird-looking arrows right here mean implies, okay? So here we go. If P implies Q and Q implies R, then P implies R. Now, I know this doesn't make a lot of sense to you right now. I totally understand that, but just be patient and copy this down in your notes if you would please and I will explain what this means in just a couple minutes okay so we're looking at two basic laws of logic and the first one is called the law of syllogism if P implies Q and Q implies R then P implies R <clears throat> here's the second law of logic now we call this the law of detachment okay the law of detachment and it reads if P implies Q and P is true then Q is true so please copy this in your notes students okay and remember I'll explain what all of this means in just a couple of minutes okay the law of detachment if P implies Q and P is true then Q is true okay so here we go now Everything that I just had you write down probably looks like Greek, and I understand that, okay? But I'm going to explain what these two laws mean by giving you examples, okay? So here we go. Let's go ahead and start off with the law of syllogism, okay? And let's go ahead and look at an example for the law of syllogism. Please copy this down. Okay, here we go. Now, uh, please take some really good notes. Now, over the summer, 
um, Blake there. He's in the classroom, Blake Skynes. Blake went to one of the uh, places in Ohio that I used to go to when I was a kid. It's a great amusement park. It's called Cedar Point, okay? So please copy this down and listen to this carefully. If Blake visits Ohio, then he will go to Cedar Point, okay? Copy that down. Now copy this down. If Blake goes to Cedar Point, then he will ride the Top Thrill Dragster, which is one of the roller coasters they have, okay? Copy that down, please. If Blake visits Ohio, then he will go to Cedar Point. If Blake goes to Cedar Point, then he will ride the Top Thrill Dragster. And then copy this down. Blake visited Ohio, okay? I'm going to pause just another uh, 30 seconds here while, while you guys finish copying this down. <clears throat> okay, now listen to me carefully, students. Look, if Blake visits Ohio, I know he's going to go to Cedar Point. And if he goes to Cedar Point, I know he's going to ride the top field dragster. Then look what I said. Blake visited Ohio. So, if I, if I know that Blake visited Ohio, then I know that he went to where? Cedar Point. And if I know that he went to Cedar Point, then I know he rode the top field dragster. So, bec because I said right here, Blake visited Ohio, what conclusion can I state? Blake rode the top field dragster. This is an example of of the law of syllogism. Do you see how it works? Look look back here, students, where I said, right here, P implies Q, and Q implies R, and then P implies R. Look, this is your P right here, and it implies Q. This is your Q right here, and it implies R. So, this is my P, and it implied R. Now, if you didn't understand uh, any of the stuff I just said right there, that's fine. You don't have to. I'm just trying to show you how the definition tied in with this example right here, okay? That's all I'm trying to show you. But the main thing you need to understand, the most important thing you need to understand is this. You need to understand how I can go from this all the way down to this conclusion right here, okay? That's really, really important. If Blake visits Ohio, I know he'll go to Cedar Point. If he goes to Cedar Point, I know that he'll ride the top tail dragster. Blake visited Ohio. So if I know for sure that he visited Ohio, then I know he'll go to Cedar Point, and I know he'll ride the top tail dragster. So here's the conclusion you can come up with, okay? Blake rode the top tail dragster, okay? This is, an, this is an example right here of syllogism. Now let's look at an example of detachment, okay? So let's, let's move on to the law of detachment. Please copy this in your notes. If the weather is good, then I will go swimming. Please copy that in your notes. If the weather is good, then I will go swimming. Now copy this in your notes. The weather is good today. The weather is good today. Now, <clears throat> look what it says. If the weather is good, then I will go swimming. And then I say, the weather's good. So what conclusion can you make? It's really easy. I will go swimming. And that's what the law of detachment said. Remember it said if P implies Q and P is true, or in other words, P takes place, then Q will also take place. This is pretty simple. Look at it again. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. Okay, I'll look at it again. If the weather is good, then I will go swimming. And then I stated, the weather is good today. So what conclusion can you come up with? I will go swimming, okay? This is an example of the law of detachment. All right? Okay, moving on. Now, we're going to finish the video by turning to page 123 and working on numbers 1 through 5. Students, I don't mind if you work ahead. 
But when you get down to some of these ones at the bottom here, especially at number five, please pay attention because number five is going to be really difficult to do, okay? So trust me on that and be careful about working ahead when you get down to numbers four and five, especially number five, okay? So uh, in your notes, go ahead and make note that we're going to turn to page 123 and we're going to work on numbers one through five. Okay, students, here we go. Uh, we're going to first of all use this statement right here, and it says, if the hill is covered with snow, then I will go sledding. Okay, question number one, or goal, goal number one, they want us to state the hypothesis and conclusion of the statement. Okay, so the hypothesis would be, if the hill is covered with snow. So here we go. Okay, there's the hypothesis. Now the conclusion would be that I will go sledding. So the conclusion is okay. So pretty simple. This is the hypothesis, and this is the conclusion. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Now number two says state the contraposite. Now remember the first thing you do. When you're stating a contraposite, I'm going to do this, by the way. I'm going to copy this and put it over here and make it a little smaller. There we go. All right, now back here. Okay, now number two says state the contrapositive. Now, remember, when you state the contrapositive, <clears throat> the, the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and negate the hypothesis and the conclusion then you can switch them later okay so if the hill is not covered with snow then I will not go sledding and now go ahead and pick up your uh, conclusion and write it over here and pick up your hypothesis and write it over here okay so it should look something like this <clears throat> uh, let's see if I don't go sledding then the hill is not covered with snow now students I hope that made sense again the first thing I did is I negated my hypothesis and I negated my conclusion. And the second thing I did is I then swapped the conclusion and the hypothesis. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. All right, so that's the contrapositive. Now, number three says, state the hypothesis and the conclusion of the contrapositive. So let's go back over here. Here's my contrapositive. Let's go ahead and state the hypothesis. The hypothesis, the hypothesis would read, here's the hypothesis. If I don't go sledding, there's the hypothesis, and the conclusion would be then the hill is not covered in snow. Okay? That's pretty simple, students. Not that hard, okay? So here's your contrapositive right here. <clears throat> here's your hypothesis, and here's your conclusion. All right? Okay, let's continue on. Let's take a look at what they ask us to do next here. Uh, okay. Now, here's where it gets a little difficult, students, so please pay attention, all right? They want us to assume the following statements are true. If Winnie reads the book by Friday, then she'll write the report on Saturday. If she writes the report on Saturday, then she will turn it in on Monday. Now, listen to number four. Assume that Winnie reads the book by Friday. So in other words, she reads the book by Friday. What conclusion can you make? Well, let's see. If she reads the book by Friday, then she will write the report on Saturday. And if she writes the report on Saturday, then she will turn it in on Monday. So if she reads the book by Friday, what conclusion can I make? This right here. She will turn it in.
on Monday. There we go. It's that simple. Okay? So, if Winnie reads the book by Friday, then she'll write the report on Saturday. If she writes the report on Saturday, then she'll turn it in on Monday. So, Winnie read the book by Friday, so I know she will turn it in on Monday. Now, number five, that's the law of syllogism, by the way, students. Number four is the law of syllogism. Now, in question number five, you're, you're about ready to see why it's so important to know how to write contrapositives. Okay, now look at this. Number five says, suppose that Winnie does not turn in the report on Monday. What conclusion can you make? Well, students, I have a real big problem with this because nowhere in this statement up here do I see the word, she did not turn it in. And, and nowhere in this statement here do I see the expression that she did not turn something in? In other words, listen to me. Nowhere in this first expression do you see the word what? Not. And nowhere in this second expression do you see the word what? Not. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rewrite this using contrapositives. And we're going to have to rewrite this using a contrapositive. And then after we've rewritten the two statements, then we can see if there's a conclusion that we can draw. Now, how did I know to do that? Because it says right here, suppose that Winnie does not turn the report in. What conclusion can you make? We don't know because we have no uh, comments on what's going to happen if she doesn't turn something in. So, let's go ahead and, and write the contrapositive of this first statement, and let's write the contrapositive of the second statement, and let's see if we can if we can come up with a conclusion, okay? So here we go. Let's go ahead and try this and see what happens. Okay, students, I'm going to go a little fast here, but I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just write this with a pen, I think. Okay, I'm going to take a look at this statement here, and I'm going to put the word not. If if Winnie does not read the book by Friday, she will not write the report on Saturday. Now, now I'm going to swap the hypothesis and the conclusion. So I'm going to say, if Winnie does not write the report on Saturday, then she did not read the book by Friday. Okay, there we go. So this expression right here that I'm circling is the contrapositive for this first expression right here. Okay, now let's write the contrapositive for this second statement here, okay? So if Winnie does not write the report on Saturday, then she will not turn it in on Monday. So here we go. Now we're going to swap the hypothesis and the conclusion. So if Winnie does not turn her report in on Monday, so if Winnie... Guys, I hope, I hope you're taking really good notes on this, okay? If Winnie does not turn in report Monday then she did not write the report on Monday now students let's see if we can kind of make this uh, have a little bit of reason here okay if Winnie does not write the report on Saturday then she did not read the book by Friday if Winnie does not turn in the report on Monday then she did not write the report let's see uh, this should be Saturday right here then she did not turn the report in on Saturday sorry about that 
Huh. Well, let's see if we can make a little bit of, of sense out of this. How about this? We've, we've written the contrapositive of the first statement, and we've written the contrapositive of the second statement. So, so now we have two statements that contain the word not, correct? Now, let's do this. Let's swap these two phrases and see what happens. Just, just trust me for a second, okay? So let's swap these two phrases. Let's take this one and let's put it over here on this page, all right? And then let's take this one, let's slide it down, let's make it the bottom one, okay? And then we'll bring this back over. Now watch what happens when you swap these two expressions, okay? Now let's see if this makes sense. I think, students, you're going to see that you're going to totally be able to use the law of syllogism, okay? Watch this carefully. It's really neat. Here we go. Now watch this. If Winnie does not turn in the report Monday, then she did not write the report on Saturday. Oh, and look at this. If she did not write the report on Saturday, then she didn't read the book by Friday. Look at that. It's perfect. If she doesn't turn in Monday, then she did not write the report on Saturday. And if she did not write the report on Saturday, then she did not read the book by Friday. So, look at the question they have for you. Question number five says this. Let's go back to here. Question number five says, suppose that Winnie does not uh, turn the report in on Monday. Well, let's see. Here it is. If, if Winnie does not turn the report in on Monday, then she did not write the report on Saturday. If she did not write the report on Saturday, then she did not read the book by Friday. So what conclusion can we make if it says here that suppose that Winnie did not turn the report in Monday, then the conclusion I can make is she did not read the book by Friday because it says this. It says if she does not turn the report in Monday, then she did not write the report on Saturday. And if she did not write the report on Saturday, then she did not read the book by Friday. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go back to here and say this. Let me get a drink here. I want to say this to you students. When I looked at number five and I saw that it says suppose that, that Winnie does not turn the report in, when I saw the word not, that's when you knew right away you had to rewrite these as contrapositives so that you had the word not in there, okay? I hope that makes sense. I know it's a pretty tough video, and I know it's not really easy to understand, okay? But if you'll continue to take really good notes and pay attention and work on this, I think you'll be okay, all right? If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call or email.